Hello, I'm here to talk about Amigas y Rivales, a Mexican telenovela that appears to be about basic teenage problems, but is actually more disturbing than any telenovela I've ever seen. It has murder, it has incest, it has deportations, and on top of that, it's also got insane early 2000s fashions and dance moves. So sit back and get ready to experience one of the most traumatizing episodes of telenovelas are hell. Amigas y Rivales tells the story of four young women. There's Nayeli, who's poor and lives in a flooded hut with her mom, who looks like she's always smelling a fart and desperately needs to get her roots dyed. Nayeli dreams of moving to Hollywood and becoming a famous star, and she's preparing for it by singing in her living room and playing a guitar that sounds like total crap. The second of the girls is Laura. She's middle class, loves computers, and has major daddy issues. When we first see her, she's boiling two sad huevos for her depressed, alcoholic father. Then there's Jimena. She's rich, and she's a bitch. Jimena lives in a mansion that's decorated with life-sized camels and fish statues that won't stop vomiting. Ever since Jimena's mother died, she's been spending her time boozing, hooking up with beefy guys, sucking on cigarettes, and partying with her best friend, the fourth of the girls, a cracked-out party animal named Ophelia. The telenovela gets dark fast, when one day, Nayeli is walking to work and gets kidnapped by two drug addicts that are so disgusting you can smell them through the screen. One of them pulls a knife on her and tries to take advantage of her, except his hand slips and he stabs himself in the neck and dies. Classic move. Nayeli gets scared she'll get blamed for his death, so she decides to leave Mexico and cross the U.S. border in the back of a produce truck carrying nothing but her out-of-tune guitar. As for Ophelia, well, the telenovela gods come down on her hard when she gets diagnosed with HIV in the first damn episode. Think this is dark? Well, it gets even darker. Laura's disaster dad gets laid off, so she's forced to get a job working for Don Roberto, a creepy old man who looks like he's made of wax. Don Roberto takes one look at her and literally says, what a beautiful little girl, and then does what any boss would do to a new employee. He gives her a makeover and takes her on a date. To make matters worse, we find out that Don Roberto is actually Jimena's father, who recently married Roxana, an evil garbage psychopath whose hobby is murdering people. Okay, now let's get back to Nayeli, who's joyfully spinning in circles because she's arrived to the U.S. where she'll finally become a star. Except she obviously doesn't. Instead, she gets a job at a strip club and starts dating an abusive man who tries to take advantage of her. Which isn't funny, but what is funny is the ceramic rooster with an American flag coming out of it that lurks in the background. Nayeli escapes this piece of shit and moves in with Johnny Trinidad, a young boxer who professed his love to her while a stripper shook her ass in his face. Johnny's a nice guy who always looks like he's constipated and does this really annoying thing where he says things in English and then repeats them in Spanish. I'm not leaving. Yo no me voy. Nayeli is happy and in love, which obviously means something bad is coming her way. And sure enough, she gets deported back to Mexico, where she gets a job working as a maid for Jimena and her family. Now all four girls are living in Jimena's house, who, by the way, gets deep into drugs to cope with the fact that one of her best friends has HIV, the other is dating her dad, and her stepmom is dating her brother. Jimena hits rock bottom after taking three pills of ecstasy, having a seizure at the club, and going home with a creep who locks her in his apartment and prostitutes her in exchange for drugs. If you think this is too much, I suggest you watch Dawson's Creek, because this next level shit only happens in telenovelas. <coughs> Ophelia devises a plan to rescue Jimena with the help of her new boyfriend, El Feo, a dweeb who's covered in acne and dances like crap. El Feo proposes to her by putting a ring on this terrifying pineapple with a face on it that's something straight out of a nightmare. <coughs> Things are finally going well. Jimena goes to rehab, Nayeli gets discovered, and gets booked on a TV show where she's to play the love interest of none other than her long-lost love, Johnny Trinidad. And everyone lives happily ever after. 
Of course they don't. Things between Nayeli and Johnny Trinidad, who is now a famous boxer slash actor, don't work out because he's addicted to cocaine and champagne. But get this, Laura dumps Don Roberto because she falls in love with Robertito. When Don Roberto finds out, he gets so jealous it gives him a stroke. Roxana has now lost both father and son to Laura, and she's ready for vengeance. So, during the girls' graduation party, she dresses up as a cloaked goblin and has a bunch of waiters unleash a thousand bullets onto the girls and their families. A ton of people get shot, and for some reason, Roxana tries to choke the sweet old lady who has done nothing to anyone. Luckily, Roxana pours acid on her own face by mistake, which ruins her plan. She gets locked in an insane asylum with a face so deformed, it looks like someone took a shit on it. The telenovela ends with all the friends staying up all night and greeting a new day by standing inside a flower made out of balloons. The end.